Um, we have already talked a lot about responsibility. Uh, can we go on with that concept? <clears throat> it's it might not be new uh, in the content. Uh, I re want to remind you that my task is to uh, to develop a language for talking about things many people know, so that uh, we can spread these ideas better. <coughs> And I think uh, uh, the responsibility culture concept uh, could be a next good next step here now. You have, do you have the nerve to, to listen more right now? So in the afternoon we do something interactional again, so that it's not always the same style. Good. The roots. Uh, of the concepts is uh, passivity and symbiosis concepts of the shifts. I guess all of you mm -hmm. are familiar with that. <clears throat> and I had the idea to first develop it as a concept and a language for dealing with responsibility in organizations and building up an organizational and professional responsibility culture. My personal belief is <coughs> that responsibility is a wonderful crystallization point of discussing many of the economical and so uh, problems and problems of the society we have today. We need to really uh, develop, uh, on the one hand, larger horizons of understanding what our responsibility is on this planet. At the same time, we need somehow a language to break it down to concrete situation. Otherwise, we, we get lost <laughs> in the wide world of possible responsibilities. And for that, we need a flexible tool in thinking about. <coughs> so I first developed it for dealing with responsibilities in relationships and organizations as a contribution to culture of responsibility. So this is a shift concept. Individuals try to become a whole person by using someone else. So this is the one part. And the other part is the individual avoids autonomy and integrity. As it does not develop further to new horizons of uh, responsibility, instead playing games like wooden leg, going to a pathological regression, or in exclusion of parts of personality, or parts of the frame of reference of the world, just ignoring what happens is happening in Africa or somewhere else, and said when we I buy a handy here. It has material in that which is dicked in Africa by children uh, in a slavery way of producing. These are the ego state schemata, you know. Maybe there is parent and child acting together without much adult perception and controlling on the right side maybe with part-time job for the adult but uh, the scheme suggests that the, each person is excluding parts of their functioning and the world they are relating to and depending on someone else instead <clears throat> and the shift definition, a dysfunctional symbiotic relationship is one where an individual doesn't take his or her own responsibility. Sorry. Can you go back to the other slide? Can you just go back to the other slide? Yeah. I've never seen that one on the right before. I've only ever seen it with the parent, adult, and then just the child. Yeah, maybe I don't know. I, I just okay. took that yeah. to, to even uh, to say even as adult is involved, right, okay. uh, it's still symbiotic. Right, 
it can still be symbiotic. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not important whether this is original or not. Okay. So, either responsibility is not taken, or it's shifted to, to someone else. It's not always shifted. Sometimes it's just not taken. For example, responsibility for the atmosphere. You can construct that it's shifted to someone else because first generations will have the effect of it, but it's it's not an active shifting, it's just a result of not taking responsibility. This is one part, respo- responsibility is shifted or uh, if there is coming discomfort from missing responsibility system, this comfort is not coming back to those who neglect their responsibility, but is hitting other people in presence or other generations. <clears throat> and this is true in personal relationships. You all work with concepts like this when you feel you're working too hard, your client <coughs> is not doing anything, waiting you do the job for him, then it's a symbiotic relationship, you can confront this and so. But we also have re- a symbiotic relationships on a global level or in organizations. Um, and I guess uh, the majority of symbiotic relationships happen between people which never need, meet each other. Because it's a, it's a structural symbiotic system. And in order to be responsible, we need to find out what the structural symbiotic system is and who, who, uh, where the discomfort is ending up. And very often these people who have to bear the discomfort are not the people that are competent or powerful to reshift it. So if we want to change something, those who uh, maybe not purposely uh, act in a system that is shifting responsibility, understand what, how the relationships are, and actively take responsibility back. Also, it might be easier to use later generations to pay for what we consume now. That's a question of ethics. It's, it's not, you cannot observe it in a single interactional situation. So you need to have concepts and mindsets to go for this maturity of symbiotic relationships in the world. This is one, the shifting of responsibility or discomfort, one kind of definition. And there's another kind of definition that's more the developmental perspective for a person or an organization. Uh, As long as you are stuck in symbiotic relationships, you do not activate or develop your potentials you have and your dignity, being an ethical uh, human being. Um, These are two two approaches to to the same term, but different questions coming from them. Can I ask a question? Yes. Where an organization is set up so it needs employees' needs more than another organization might be, say, for example, the army, or say, the a- where they have to, say, do visas for cabin crew or um, health injections that you would normally assume yourself. Yeah. Could those relationships get quite clouded or the roles get quite clouded that you actually don't know, so you actually form a symbiotic relationship where you are dependent on the other person to do that for you? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't understand the question. What I'm, what I'm saying is, where you might have an organisation mm-hmm. where they would provide certain things for you that you would ordinarily do for yourself, mm-hmm. yeah, say like the army or the air force, ah, okay. right? So, so the you, relationship becomes you invite people into addiction. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's one perspective you should think about when you do services. Mm-hmm. How much is each kind of service, each kind of interaction, from this perspective, could consider from the question, does it, is it an actual help? Mm. 
is it um, a tr contributing to a, a non-healthy mm -hmm. mutual exploiting system mm -hmm. or addiction system? Mm -hmm. um, and if so, can we change it? So that is less making people addicted. Mm -hmm. Unless, it depends whether I want a, a non-addictive system. Mm -hmm. Some Certainly many companies uh, welcome addiction For, and our society welcomes addiction to consume mm -hmm. because they believe that's the, that money makes the world go around. Either it costs the survival capacity of the planet. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, yeah, it's just a dimension. You, you sh if you want to be responsible for that, you should consider that. And you have a, the same problem if you raise children. At each point, should I do it for the child? Is yeah. it more healthy to do that I do it? Or should I try to make an educational process on it? I often was too lazy. It was easier to do it for, but it, it, it has its price and we pay today. <laughs> <laughs> so we did not accept the discomfort of doing the more strenuous job of helping to do it, my, that my da daughter does things herself, and uh, she pays the price by having some difficulties really to learn it, and we pay the price of not getting uh, our new freedom as she is mm -hmm. grown up now, and have, have to work, be more around. For me, that's the kind of question that often doesn't get asked at the psychological level of mm -hmm. the contract. Yes. And imagine mm -hmm. the potency of being able to put a question like that on the table and, mm. and just have a dialogue about it. Mm. And then when it switches, that's when either parties can become really persecutory. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And it's also structural, that we do not go too much into individual interactional responsibility. Mm. Uh, in a, uh, if you set up a system that people cannot organize their own business without using a complex system they do not understand, mm -hmm. then you almost yeah. force them into be, being part of an addicted system. Yeah. And this gives others the possibility to make themselves important. Mm -hmm. And so uh, everybody should be very much aware of the price of uh, autonomy and freedom he mm -hmm. pays for comfort mm -hmm. of this kind. And the companies should think about it. it's easier to bind clients or people by connecting them to a system as they cannot easily get out mm. because it's a high price. But in the long run, I don't know whether that's a good strategy of binding consumers or, or employees. Mm -hmm. It's usually, in the long run, it is better that everybody has the freedom to be there or not to be there, or knowing why he wants to be there. Mm. That's what Niklas Luhmann says, the double contingence. Being together while each, everybody has, is aware of the choice of doing something else instead. Mm. Then you really talk about, is it worthwhile what you exchange mm. or not. Well, it goes back to your bit about roles, yeah. because if you're doing that, you could be discounted somebody's ability to do something, mm -hmm. right? And it can actually be confusing as to what their role really is. Yes. Yeah, I work, um, the organisation that I work for is IT based, so mm -hmm. it's very much into computers and with the nature of the development of computers these days, security is a real high is a, is a high selling point for our customers and over the years pre, you know maybe five six years ago we were very free with our employees personal information car registration numbers and things like that for when they were accessing customer sites but over the last two three years people have started getting really sensitive about their own personal information mm -hmm. and we've been caught up a couple, a couple of times where engineers aren't willing to disclose personal information mm -hmm. and we can't prevent them from doing that it's their personal information mm -hmm. but it has an impact on the service and we end up losing skills mm -hmm. because we can't those guys can't attend these customers because they're not willing through their own free choice mm -hmm. to provide that confidential personal information mm -hmm. 
So from an HR perspective, we can't force them to do that. Mm. But as a company, we lose valuable skills. Yeah. yeah. So it's just a, uh, a responsibility concept mm. is a point of view, not only for dealing with actual personal situations, mm. but with constructing structures, mm. with the logic of products, mm -hmm. and thus with all contribution mm. to reality mm. creation. Mm. I think pensions is another example of that, because um, I'm finding mm. that the, the unspoken bargain in organizations is you tolerate this and you'll get your pension. Right. And a lot of the role confusion and contamination and fixation that I'm working with as a consultant is to do with that unnamed deal. Right. So people have to then fix that mindset in order to tolerate something that has become intolerable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, yeah. And as, as long as mutual responsibility is not really clarified, yeah. there's a space where you don't dare to talk about because you don't know what Precisely. you win or lose if you Precisely. do. Precisely. Mm -hmm. And that's, but that is corruption. Mm -hmm. no. I think it's an existential issue as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking too, um, I'm having a moment. <laughs> I'm just making sense of something, but I'm working with an organisation where they are making quite a few people redundant, and I'm just thinking that actually in many ways what they've created over years is a symbiotic relationship with their staff, mm -hmm. and now they're kind of, you know, easing them out, um, and in a way the role of me as the coach is around reactivating and helping them develop to be more adult again. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because they've not been treated like adults. Right. Or is it a shift of responsibility? Well, I'm just wondering mm. that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just wondering that. That's and like I'm on, I'm on the tight wire between. Yeah. So you're easing them out. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Really <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Rosemary. <laughs> 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 I just like that, yes. <clears throat> and this is on the level of uh, individual professional self control. Yeah. And on the other hand, uh, it might have been built up a tradition that is structural. Mm -hmm. And it is also necessary to think about structures mm -hmm. that invite people automatically into a, a new in such symbiotic relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives you a lot of jobs to do, but I don't know whether, it's, uh, whether you want to spend your life if to, to, to compensation for a structural symbiotic system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. What struck me is that um, I'm coaching somebody at the moment who um, has just taken over a new department which isn't functioning very well and he actively describes or he, he describes the staff as being um, morons and useless and disinterested just coming in to get their money and go home mm -hmm. and that may well be the case apparently that's what it's like in this area yeah. and I'm thinking about the contracting piece that you keep talking about, Helen, and, and how important it is for him to really, for him to be able to have a, an effective dialogue on, on responsibility absolutely has to come from the adult place. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, even if it's a dysfunctional symbiotic relationship, mm -hmm. he's just inviting them into another mm -hmm. symbiotic relationship, mm -hmm. but it just it's, it's a clashing Right, One. and so hiring consultants yes. to do the job for him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and if a if it's a kind of culture, one thing is we have a um, the view of of the boss, and maybe it's also a tradition in looking at employees, and we have to look closely whether it's true or not. Mm. But maybe it's partly true. Then the question is how how this culture developed. What are the hard facts and the soft facts that led to this culture and if a culture became to be habitual we each other give so many clues to, to re-enact that culture mm. that it's a difficult job to change cultures mm. and he's he's specifically been brought in to change it to make yeah, them more but to make them perform so he's coming in yeah. assuming he has to, yeah. to get something working and something isn't working yeah. 
Yeah, uh, and usually we have really to analyze very carefully what are the horizons, the contexts yeah. which we have to consider for that. Yeah. For example, if people get their money, whether they perform or not, you have a hard time with soft skills mm -hmm. to change them. So <laughs> you have to think about what 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 are the leverage the le leverages you have that all together maintain a culture or put, can change it, and then develop a design uh, how you can get access to enough leverages for enough time that uh, cultural change may happen, and it's usually not a short way. Mm. Uh, and But they expect it, because we do not have maps for understanding <coughs> how culture stabilizes itself, yeah. and how much effort, and from how many perspectives at a time, we have to uh, uh, have an impact for time enough that uh, culture can change. And sometimes it's just too complicated. Then we have to. Sometimes it's okay to to fire everybody and start a new. I'm just smiling as you're talking there because it's so true about taking a long time for the cultures to change and shift. So when I joined um, the company I'm with, I remember thinking, "Oh my God, I've joined a retirement home for chefs." <laughs> <laughs> I can't stay here too long. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. So, <laughs> if <laughs> the best is when new uh, 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 do do it in the origin. Do not allow that wrong patterns uh, start in a culture because it's uh, intuitively everybody learns his or her contribution to a symbiotic culture without knowing how mm -hmm. he or she is doing it. And we are act mutually activating our symbiotic contribution uh, without knowing that we do. And at the same time, we may not want to have that. Yeah. Uh, and it's a lot of work to understand how we, we keep it mm -hmm. and, and what is necessary to change it. So uh, it's the best is just be very much aware in the building up of a culture. And and that's the same thing with um, with shared reality. You think you, most of the enterprises start later than planned, and then they said, "Oh, let's get started somehow, and we will rebuild the system later." <laughs> but this will usually not function. So, uh, uh, if if you're really in the starting phase, put 80%, 70%, 60%, reducing in uh, doing the work as an example for how we want to perform later. And really investing in building up culture, that's the most economic thing to do. But it's not easy to get uh, people to support that. And if it's really misled, it's it's difficult because we we do not have really good theories in understanding how cultures maintain themselves. I think I'm extremely uh, um, not frustrated, but anxiety is growing up because I, what I see here uh, after you explained the, the dysfunctional symbiosis, um, how organizations work, uh, we talking a lot of in public administration on the EU level in general with other member states and the EU institutions about employee engagement, how to get first of all the best possible people mm -hmm. to join the public administration which has a very bad image mm -hmm. sometimes as, as bureaucratic and mm -hmm. administration in general and um, having had the 54,000 people who applied uh, the first competition to come to the commission having 308 on the reserve list at the end mm -hmm. of the, all the phases of the, of the thing. And the way they talk about the employee engagement now, how they want to increase that, for me, and that's not my, it's my, my problem, not my problem, but it was it's creating anxiety, is that they're inviting these people in, 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 they're talking in the terms of inviting people into this dysfunctional symbiosis, so that those people who will be invited to work 
in the organization will stay there but for all the wrong reasons. Mm. And it, it's frightening because how to switch that that invitation or this, this discussion that is taking place in the organization is extremely difficult yeah. because it's, it's in, in the culture. Yeah. And it's unhealthy. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think we have uh, yeah. quick solutions for our <laughs> cultural problems, but we need we need to have tools to think about mm -hmm. and do something. Uh, how long the way will be to get something better, I don't know. So I wonder if some of the problems come from describing it as dysfunctional in the first place. And I think there's something around, this is how we are as humans. This mm -hmm. is what we do. Mm -hmm. And for me, symbiosis is is an aspect of relationship. And it, it, there's still a space in the middle, the space between us where we co-create reality, mm -hmm. our shared reality. So in my experience, if there's symbiosis in an organisation, there's something unnamed that is being held in the system somehow. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, that's as, as an external consultant, that's the opportunity is to make some progress with yeah. the system to find a language for it. And as long as that, that stuff is unnamed, the, the symbio symbiosis holds it somehow. Mm -hmm. So for me, I don't. I think the consequences of symbiosis are very difficult to manage in organisations, but it's there for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's what we do. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to get. I mean, I'm as, I tend to pathologise things as well, mm -hmm. but I think I think that's that's the problem. Is mm -hmm. calling it that. And it's important, uh, I'm not saying people are uh, motivated, it's a question of motivation. Most people are not symbiotic. Yeah. Yeah. Symbiosis is a description of a kind of system that is often coming out of uh, not, not being competent with dealing com with complexity uh, and not catching up with development. And the fact that a lot of our experience is not in our awareness. Yes. I think that's... As you were talking and you were doing that, I got a sense of actually, is it a, it's about control and not wanting to let go? You know, because in an organisation there isn't a sense of, I need some control here, but how much can I let go? And maybe there's something about the letting go and enabling people rather than disempowering people. And sometimes when you join an organisation as a, an employee, you you want something, you want to belong. That's why people mm -hmm. really join a system because they, in some way, at some level, want to belong to something. And I often think that's where the symbiotic relationship starts. And then, out of of, of not knowing, unknowing this, you join somehow. Mm. It's that moment when you realise that you've gone too far, isn't it? And that you're abstaining from responsibility. And it's like in a marriage, isn't it? Well, for me, it's like in a long marriage. Mm -hmm that you can get into a symbiotic relationship without realising. Because that's what yeah. the need is yeah. to begin with, yeah. to fall yeah. in love, to belong, to be together. Right, totally. And then, of course, it can shift. Yeah. So, I, would sure like, I, I would like to go on there. Just so I'm not sure I agree with you, Helen, in that I think there's a difference between symbiosis and dysfunctional symbiosis. So, so it's dysfunctional is that there are consequences. Mm -hmm which are limiting and damaging. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas, yes, there is symbiosis through the belonging. I give up. I mean, Byrne talked about I give up some of my proclivities mm -hmm. in order to belong in the organisation. Yeah, yeah. And that's that can't be fine. Yeah, certainly. Mm -hmm. I always say that a, a good symbiosis in a marriage is better than a... <laughs> a mistaken autonomy relationship. <laughs> it holds longer. <laughs> I'll just write that down. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we have said much of that already. I just go through the seven points. Uh, responsibility is not not a natural thing. It's a discussion from ethical perspectives and what we think, what we should respond to. 
So it's not only how to handle competently with responsibility, it's also how to build up under mutual understanding of what responsibility is. So it's on two levels, competence. And I find it interesting uh, to look at organizations as uh, systems of responsibility. To conceptualize an organization, system of complementary responsibility, and to consider each role and relationship as part of a system of uh, responsibility. And then you do not only consider whether uh, the system is partly functioning very well, but you uh, define what is what has to be responded to that you think this system can survive and is doing an ethical job in our world. And then you might come to spots where uh, responsibilities responsibility is not yet defined and should be defined. Um, this has consequences for the definition of team. Later on I will show you some concepts I've developed for working with teams. Classically, a team is those who sit together on the floor. Mm -hmm. But today, that's gone. Mm -hmm. How should we define what a team is today? I define it as a team uh, is, are those who share responsibility. This has the consequence that you cannot define what a team is when you do not define about what kind of responsibility you want to do your team workshop. You cannot just come everybody in, then we talk about. The natural definition of team is gone. And this has also the consequence that team is um, not only horizontal, colleagues who have to work together, this is one kind of responsibility. The other is it's also vertical, it's a hierarchy, it's a leading re relationships. They are responsible as well in a different kind of relationships. So team means to a specific focus, focus to invite everybody who has a major responsibility for the focus we are on. Maybe in the colloquial dimension, in the professional dimension, in the hierarchical dimension, whatever. And you have to think about whom you need uh, that you have uh, enough uh, role players who are responsible for what you want to deal with on the stage when you work. Mm -hmm. And too often we invite people who are not important for that or less important and we do not invite people uh, who are important and then it's difficult to do if effective teamwork. <coughs> and sometimes we even have a very old ideologic attitudes like when we are together in a team we are all equal and we should meet from human being to human being. Yeah, this is nice but, nice, but doesn't have anything to do with significant learning for organizational responsibility. Certainly, this is responsibility <coughs> in the roles, not besides the roles. So, and the responsibility system, even it would be spelled out very fine, is, is always changing. So, uh, even it changes just by drifting, and society, markets change, products change, fashion change, order is changing by organizational development. So you have over and over again used uh, situations to talk anew about responsibility. So to talk about responsibility is a major part of every professional competence. And w what we know well as TA people, uh, to find somehow a way to contract on behavior, on attitudes, on competencies. And for that, we need uh, to learn a, a good confrontation communication in the sense of dialoguing, really standing for what I'm thinking, what we should do, and then be open to deal somehow, find out whether we can find a definition that is for the next steps useful. And then we talk again. 
over and over again. Very often we have the idea, let's in the beginning sit together, make a contract, talk about everything, and then this helps for one or two years. It doesn't. So it's an ongoing process. And that's the same with the idea in T, uh, of contracts in TA. Certainly it's okay to make a starting contract, but contract means a responsibility dialogue on the way, all the time. It's a more a perspective than a specific act. It's a lift. Mm. So I, tra I uh, translate responsibility with responsibility. And this has certainly to do with positions at work. And I differentiate between four dimensions. Does a person want to be responsible? Want to respond? That's a question of values. Is that person dedicated really to these questions to be responded? Is a person able to respond? Sometimes, uh, and there's a, a, a difference. I, I think a person does not, is not responsible because the person does not want to be respond, but if I clarify closer, the people, the person would like to respond if she would be able to respond, know how to. So, ethical behavior has a lot to do with competence. The question of being qualified to respond. And sometimes people just do not know that they are not qualified. Do you mean, because there's two ways of thinking about it, do you mean they are not in the role to respond? No. Or that they're not competent? Uh, no, they are not personally not qualified. Yeah. Okay. The role comes later. Uh, is a person allowed to respond? Yeah. Does the person uh, has the power, has the resources to respond? So it's a question of being sufficiently equipped. Sometimes. People want to respond, are personally competent to respond, but are not aware what powers they need and what resources they need to respond. They, they try to compensate equipment by personal competence. And this might work for some time, but it's uh, strenuous and it's not educating the system. So they always have to decide, co do I compensate right now in order that we can go forward? And how much energy do I invest in changing the system that it's easier to f personally handle this responsibility? So that people do, do not have to be so highly qualified to do a responsible job. And altogether, I, th I think we should also in organizations make the systems as qualified enough that simple People who are not very much qualified can run it. I, I guess it was Henry Ford or something, or somebody who once said, I want a company be uh, so st well structured that even a Mickey Mouse can run it. That's extreme, but we very often uh, do not develop a uh, supply enough so that people, even if they are not very edu much er educated in playing, still can play very well because the play is functioning well, it's easy to understand and it's easy to learn on the job. And if you don't have that, you have to qualify people very much to make quite a good figure in a, in a bad play. But that's not economic and it's not fun either. And so, and are, are they allowed to? How often a consultant tries to do a job he is not uh, authorized to do. So things and dimensions of how, uh, how the, uh, the leading people should change their mind, but nobody gives them any power uh, to do that or is ready to listen to them. So uh, responsibility for them is not possible because they are not allowed to. So it's the empowerment is an important question around that. 
And another question, if, is, if somebody may be, doesn't want to respond, is he obliged to respond? Will he get, become discomfort if he does not respond? And so it's not the, the, the first preference in motivation, but certainly an organization must be said way that if, if you do not, you are not responsible, there are leverages to make you uncomfortable. And uh, positive step-by-step escalations of making people uncomfortable that um, do not fulfill their responsibilities. So, and this is in that uh, all together in that picture. So we have an individual sphere on the left. Does a person want to take responsibility? Does is it? person able to, is, it, is he or she qualified? And the other side is the organization. Is the person allowed to take responsibility? <coughs> and is the person obliged to do so? And again, one part is individual and the other part is organizational. And only it, if it goes together, responsibility is possible. So, this is one of the of the schemata that make clear that I I lost my belief uh, that you can really go into good progress only focus on individuals. It's always yes or side when you work in the organizational field, and if the organizational is not mature, it doesn't help much uh, to qualify a person individually. Uh, if it is successful after some, either the person gets more in trouble because the uh, empire strikes back or the person leaves the organization or this department and this might be okay but it might also be a problem in contract when the company pays the education of this person they send the person to my training because they have some kind of sense we should do something better. So I'm obliged to talk to them what we will do and what consequences this can have. And if they will not change their system, not the whole system at a point, but the system around uh, the organizational role around this person, there's no way really to come to a, a effort. And then they have to decide whether they pay for it or not. And sometimes they come to the conclusion, okay, let's, we hire you as a consultant. And we, we help to ch- we do the learning in the system and not sending everybody, uh, we, we try to arrange a new play together and not sending uh, some of the players to the act- actor school again. Can I double check something there? It would seem looking at this that the allowed yes. equipment or powers have to obligation duties and able to qualification competencies that these three belong to the notion of wrong yes yeah, three aspects of wrong but values and wants is this not more about the um style yeah maybe may uh, i I'm, uh, this concept is for me is not uh, uh, is, is not a secondary concept to roles. No, but it's interesting to think about role here because yes. there is both the role expectations of the organisational sphere yes. and the role inhabitants at the individual sphere. Yeah, yes, it's so interesting it's nice to think to about think it. About New questions arise. You can depends on from which perspective you ask the question. You can ask the, the, the person, do you want to be ethical mm-hmm. on your job? But you also can ask the organization, do you want to be somebody who is ethical in that job? Oh. It, or do you want somebody who sells every insurance that the grandmother doesn't understand and buys? Mm. Uh, so it's also a question of roles and uh, selling strategies and ethics of an organization. Yeah. I also think if there's a pattern of individuals not wanting to take responsibility, 
it's important to think about that organisationally because I came across that with a whole team of clinicians who did not want to take responsibility. There was a whole passion of passivity going on. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't about them as individual people. They were enacting um, something within the system that hadn't been named, which was that the role they thought they had wasn't the role that they actually had if that makes sense. So the way the, the issue was presented to me is these people are resistant, they're difficult to manage, we can't make a relationship with them, they don't want to know, they're ir irresponsible, we mm. want them out of the system. But actually they held the most important piece of information, mm -hmm. which was that their role had changed profoundly and it, it, hadn't, been, it hadn't been named. Yes. Am I making sense? Yeah. So if I gone in and thought about that in terms of them as individuals, I would then have become part of that yeah. systemic issue. Yeah, so I think wanting isn't necessarily about individual motivation. I think it can. No. Yeah. Or, or, is, uh, or individual motivation is there, but it's uh, secondary. It's not the reason why. Yes. It's the way uh, how uh, interactions are Uh, come together in one person. So I ask the person, uh, make sure we want you, we want you to give your informations and be cooperative. In the end, this must be the result, and everybody who's not going with that has to go out. Mm -hmm. In the end. But now I'm ready to talk to you. What do you need mm -hmm. to tune into that ethical framework? Mm -hmm. And then you can tell me. I don't understand. I, I'm, I'm scared. I lose some benefits or uh, if it comes out that I'm not so competent in some ways and I cannot hide it any longer, what will happen then? And then we can really bargain uh, what, you, what you need mm. to adapt to a responsibility system as we define it. And it might be that even if we uh, bargain a lot, the matching will cannot be done again. And if then the person knows, okay, if that's the case, mm -hmm. we talk about a fair separation. Mm -hmm. So the scare goes down. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in the first place, certainly it's um, a power thing, a hierarchical thing to say, this is a kind of responsibility system we want to have, mm -hmm. but we give you a fair chance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I'm not against hierarchy. That's a mechanism of evolution. The most successful uh, mechanism uh, of organization and evolution. But it's important to use it in a good way. Mm -hmm. um, I also made a difference between two categories of responsibility. I, I sometimes said in a joke, as a waiter on the Titanic is certainly only responsible of giving good service. But when he sees the iceberg, there is something more. <laughs> <laughs> And this is the difference between being responsible for, that's where he will be fired when he's not doing it, and the responsibility in, in relation to, or the, related to, and certainly in complex systems there is a, res a responsibility that is directly com tied to your role and the play you are in. And at the same time, everybody uh, is not allowed to limit responsibility on that. So there's kind of a part of responsibility that this part ties in other parts and all together we can Uh, be healthy and successful. And mm -hmm. it depends on the kind of, of organization. The part that is well defined might be big, and the part uh, having responsibility, responsibility related to might be very small. In a well structured organization, the smaller it is, the less it can be 
defined everything in an okay way, the responsibility for might be 30%, and the responsibility related to might be 70%. The more uh, responsibility related to is not defined, the more we have to discuss what is the benefit of the whole system over and over again. But uh, in my in my institute, I would not allow uh, if I, I even get angry if somebody if in the group room the light is uh, damaged, and for three weeks nobody feels uh, responsible for seeing that and telling that it should be exchanged. That's certainly. All the people who are in that room are not responsible for light, but responsible related to that light is okay in our group room. And <laughs> not every, not everybody is so talented. When I when I enter a room, I immediately see the light that is not working. I immediately see the plants that is thirsty, and. Many in my institutes, they just do not see it, or I try mm -hmm. to educate them. They just do not see it. It's not that they weren't ready to take responsibility, it's just it's not their will. They are in a different blood of reality. So this is what difference that might be a, a make a difference when you discuss responsibility. And then we have uh, in the shift series a passive behavior, or I say more um, uh, responsibility avoiding behavior. Be uh, even in the shifts, most passive behavior is not passive. It's, it's only not active in taking over a specific responsibility that therapists think that should be taken over. So it was a misleading term, passive behavior. And you know these four types. I just uh, want to give some language examples how to transform these ideas into organizational work. So doing nothing uh, has the effect. This means doing nothing concerning um, an issue where there is a common sense that something should be done. If there didn't, if there was no responsibility dialogue. Diagnosing doing nothing is not very helpful because maybe the person doesn't have the idea that he or she should do something at that point. So before you say I confront you for doing nothing, so are you aware uh, that you should do something at that point? And then we are again uh, at the levels of uh, encountering to build up shared reality. And after we had gone through that, then I can come to the diagnosis, you did nothing where it was clear that you should do something. Mm -hmm. And the function of doing nothing, or the effect, is not the motivation, it's the effect. I, maybe it's also motivation, but I talk about meaning and consequences, not so much about motivations and history. The effect is inviting us into doing instead. And the misadaptation, it was called overadaptation, it's also not a good term in the shift terminology, it's a misadaptation. That's an adaptation to illusionary requests mm -hmm. instead of those that are contracted or clarified. But if you don't have a, a discussion culture on responsibility, it's difficult to make this diagnosis. Yeah. And the effect of it is invite others into accepting wrong responses or into correcting and clarifying instead as a compensation. Agitation, I have translated in overdone or not adequately directed activity and engagement to somebody who is very active, very dynamic, but is doing something that is, it's overdoing, it's always making a fuss of things where it's not necessary to do that, or it's inadequately. The, the dynamic doesn't bring us anywhere. 
and it's invo inviting others into exhausting co agitation, some companies, companies, it's a culture of exhausting co agitation, and it's avoiding, uh, and it's uh, inviting into avoiding or into taking over, staying essential. And emergency, it's a shift terminology, it was violence? Incapacitation. Incapacitation. Incapacity, right. So I called it emergency. Causing emergency concerning oneself or concerning responsibility. And it's inviting into forcing others, forcing them to take over. Because if you leave it like this, the damage is too high for everybody. That's quite a useful differentiation. You still can use it. So, we are um, in, uh, developing a program for training of what are typical situations in which your partner is avoiding or the system is avoiding responsibility and what can you then do that you are competent uh, in uh, responsibility inviting communication or confronting avoiding of responsibility. And uh, I have read a new paper on that, but it's still in Germany. It's a five, five times five perspectives on responsibility. But the basic idea is this, identify and account, account discomfort. That's the first thing. And if you are forbidden to discount, uh, to, to detect discomfort, then it's a problem to analyze it. Then you locate discomfort with what situations or what behavior or what tasks is this discomfort connected? And uh, with what kind of responsibility, of whom, for what, is this discomfort connected? And you can ask questions like, if you, your boss would talk to the customer, customer and make clear that you can do an organizational development in a three-day workshop uh, and tell you that you're not obliged to try this. Would you feel better then? Yeah. So you will find out what is the responsibility who relieves discomfort. And then you find ideas how to retranslate discomfort into responsibility. And um, then you can request responsibility and dialogue on it. Maybe the other person has a different understanding of responsibilities and we have to dialogue on it. And we, it's important that we learn to have potent invitations. What many people do is they are working too long under discomfort, then they get angry and they are bossy with their boss and say, this person it's not any good, doesn't have any idea. I tell this person, now you have to do this and that. Changing levels, changing roles, being bossy with the boss. And what the boss is doing is say you are misbehaving, and he's true. Uh, and by slapping you, he is no, not really a need for him to answer to your question. And so if you learn adequately acting on inviting into responsibility and confronting, avoiding of responsibility, um, you feel better, you make others feel better, and the chances that you are hurt and the other tunes into a dialogue is just better. But if the other person doesn't want to, it's not, it cannot be done by communication. It only can be done by power then. And that's a different question. Mm -hmm. And um, this is why you should not only rely on communication, but uh, the other part of training and responsibility management is define self-caring strategies. If I cannot change things, how can I 
what can I do not to have the discomfort? And if possible, is it a okay way to organize shifting of discomfort to those who should take responsibility? So, if, you, if it's easier to put the garbage in the next country, nobody cares about that, you can talk a lot. But when they take the garbage and bring it back to you uh, and organize this effectively, then you have a powerful invitation to, to think about responsibility. Mm-hmm. And sometimes both is necessary. Yeah. The uh, strategy of reshifting discomfort, and this is also true in a global sense, and as a starting point for dialoguing then how we can do it in future. So this was a responsibility system stuff. I I I, I love it what we what we can make out of TA concepts. Mm-hmm. Yeah? yeah. At first glance you think, oh it's treating schizophrenics. Could you le- <laughs> could you learn something from that to 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 um, build up Responsibility cultures? Yes, you can, but you have to develop the concepts. Some organizations are schizophrenic. Questions? No. No, lots of food for thought. Yeah. And I'm um, I'm aware that you keep teasing us with with telling us about. Um, Articles or books that you've written in German that we can't read. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You keep teasing us with them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I, I, it's not meant to be teasing. It's it, it's more that uh, I think about uh, many things are written in English. Have you already looked on my website? Mm-hmm. I, I'm aware of many articles I need to now go and read. <laughs> okay. Nice and there are <laughs> and there are a lot of things that are not read, but if yeah. you, if I come to the impression that you really want to have that stuff in English, and it's worthwhile to put energy and money into it to translate it, I will do so. So it's not not to tease you to learn German. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a lot of time. Yeah. It does, and they have longer words because they don't put them all together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs>